गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स सो टुडे वील गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद द सेशन द सब्जेक्ट अनालिसिस ऑफ डिटर्मिनेट स्ट्रक्चर्स इन द सब्जेक्ट मॉड्यूल नंबर फाइव आर्चिस एंड केबल स्ट्रक्चर्स ओके सो बिफोर गोइंग इन टू द डिटेल्स ऑफ दिस के आर्चिस एंड केबल स्ट्रक्चर्स लेट अस सी वॉट यू मीन बाय एन आर्च ओके वॉट आर द फंक्शंस ऑफ आर्चिस एंड हाउ द अनालिस ऑफ आर्च आर्चिस इज गोइंग टू बी डन so when you compare the simply supported beam which is subjected to uniformly distributed load as you know the maximum bending moment will be at the center and the maximum bending moment will going to be increase increases with the square of the sam, uh, span that is w l square by 8 so l square that is important here so as the span increases the bending moment will going to be increased okay so as the bending moment increases and uh, this will become uneconomical for the long span structures so for long span structures the beam will going to be uneconomical so to overcome this difficulty uh, we'll going to provide an arch then uh, what do you mean by an arch arch is nothing but an inverted cable so and it receives the load mainly in compression but because of its rigidity it must also resist some bending moment and shear forces depending upon the shape and how it is loaded so arches are nothing but curved beams that transfer load to the their plane okay now what what is what is the function of an arch so arch is nothing but it, uh, it is it has to carry a weight of the structure above the opening because of their shape the blocks support each other by mutual pressure of their own weight hence the structure remains in the position by the resistance from the support so when you compared with simply supported beam and arch so for long spans so arch will be preferred okay over the beams now next important thing is uh, what are the different components of an arch so this sketch indicates the arch so in this the different components are the inside surface of the arch is considered as intrados or it is called as a soffit the outside surface of the arch is called as extrados or a back then the topmost or the highest point of the arch is considered as the crown okay then the horizontal distance between the two supports is called as springing line and the center of the crown to the horizontal or springing line is called as central rise and the supports end supports are called as the abutments that is intrados extra doors springing line central rise and this is the crown point so these are the different uh, uh, components of an arch now next important thing is uh, how the arches are classified okay so there are mainly five factors based on these five factors the arches are classified the first factor is depending upon the materials used for the construction that is brick arches stone arches concrete arches timber arches and metal arches so what materials we are using for the construction based on that brick stone concrete timber metal arches will be there this is the first factor the second factor for the classification is type of supports provided for the arch that is first is fixed arch or it is also called as zero hinged arch so there will be no hinge okay so at both the ends that is support a and support b these two are fixed okay this is called as a fixed arch and one important observation we can make here is okay so fixed arch will be statically indeterminate means the only equilibrium equations are not sufficient to find out the unknown reaction so fixed arch will be statically indeterminate arch similarly the second classification is two hinged arch as the name indicates there will be two hinges one at the support a and support b that is hinged at a hinged at b so this is called as two hinged arches so both the ends are hinged and again important observation is this two hinged is also also a statically indeterminate okay so fixed arch as well as two hinged arch comes under the category that is statically indeterminate arches now the third classification is three hinged arch okay as the name suggest there will be three hinges one is at support a 
another hinge at support B and apart from these two one more additional hinge will be there at point C. So this is point C that is called as at crown point there is one more additional hinge. So because of this this three hinges it is called as three hinged arch. Okay. Uh, one important observation again you can uh, see here so three hinged arch is statically determinate so three hinged arch is statically determinate means three equilibrium equations are sufficient to find out the unknowns okay now the next factor is for the classification based on shape of the arch right so arch arch will be given the different shapes based on that the first one is flat arch okay second is segmental arch third is semicircular arch and fourth one is horse show arch so this will be shape of horse show okay so this is the third classification fourth classification is based on the number of centers that is one centered arches two centered arches three centered arches and four centered arches so depending upon the centers so the arches will be classified one two three and four centered arches the next classification is important classification that is based on based on shape and arch axis how the arch axis will be provided based on that the classification will be okay so this is a parabolic arch so it may be two hinged or three hinged so the arch will be in the shape of parabolic so the second classification is circular arch the arch will be in the form of circular okay and the third one will be elliptical arch so based on the shape of the axis it is parabolic circular and elliptical arch so these are the classification okay there are mainly five factors used for the classification of arches okay now the next important thing uh, after going through the classification of uh, uh, arches now let us consider only three hinged parabolic arches okay because we are dealing with only determinate arches that is three hinged parabolic arches with supports at the same level now see supports a and support b two hinges at a and b these two supports are at the same level so three hinged parabolic arches with supports at the same level now here some important terms will going to be considered now uh, as we know we are considering the parabolic arch okay in this uh, sketch so the distance between support a and b that is horizontal distance is called as total span of the arch l and the central rise okay from uh, hinge c to the springing line is called as the central rise and it is denoted as small h and these are the loads acting on the arch and this is the vertical ordinate y is the vertical ordinate at any point on the arch with reference to a as the origin so x is the horizontal distance and y is the vertical distance or vertical ordinate on the arch okay now as you know this is a parabolic arch the equation of parabola considering a as the origin Okay, that is left hand support A as the origin. We can write the parabolic equation as y equal to that is any ordinate y is equal to k x into l minus x. So write this is equation number one. Then what is k? K is considered as constant. Now let us consider this y is equal to h. Okay, so y is equal to h that is central rise. And uh, now consider at the center of the arch x is equal to what l by Two. So at x is equal to l by two, y will going to become what h. Okay. Now substitute this y is equal to h and x is equal to l by two in equation number one. So in equation number one, after substituting these uh, values, okay, we'll going to get uh, h is equal to k into l by two, l minus l by two. So after calculating this, h is equal to four l square by four. K h is equal to four l square by four, or k is equal to four h by l square. K is equal to four h by l square. Now substitute this constant k value in equation number one. So equation number one becomes now y is equal to k is four h by l square k x that is x into l minus x. So therefore, any vertical ordinate y is equal to four h divided by l square. Into x l minus x. Write this equation number two. So equation number two gives vertical ordinate at any point on the arch. 
okay now let us uh, differentiate this equation number 2 okay differentiate this equation number that is parabolic equation so after differentiating what we'll going to get so y is equal to 4h by l square okay now differentiation of this equation is so 4h by l square into differentiation of xl is l minus x square is 2x so dy by dx is equal to 4h by l square into l minus 2x so write this equation number 3 so this equation number 3 is known as slope equation this will going to give the slope or angle theta okay now after going through this uh, parabolic equation and the uh, slope equation now let us uh, uh, study the two important ter terms in the uh, arch one is normal thrust and another is radial shear so see again the, the three hinged parabolic arch okay that is uh, hinged at a b and hinged at c as usual this is the horizontal span that is total span l this is the central rise small h and any ordinate y at a distance horizontal distance x from support a okay now try to find out this normal thrust and radial shear for this arch now what is a normal thrust as the name indicates normal means perpendicular thrust means the reaction so the reaction which is perpendicular to the arch axis is called as normal thrust okay and it is denoted as n now let us uh, consider some portion of the arch okay consider only the portion ad now see here we will going to consider the portion ad okay the reaction ha va here the reaction h a is equal to h you can write it as h then v a okay then uh, this is the point d this is a vertical ordinate y this is horizontal distance x now at this point at point d we'll going to draw a tangent okay and this tangent will be considered as x axis or it is also called as normal thrust line okay this is normal thrust line or you can consider this as a x axis now perpendicular to this if you draw a axis this is called as a radial shear line okay this uh, horizontal line is called as normal thrust line and this axis is called as radial shear line now to to balance this these two reactions at d we'll going to uh, apply the reactions so opposite to this this is horizontal reaction h and then opposite to this the downward reaction vd that is v at d so h h then v vd or v okay so now let us uh, try to find out what is this normal thrust how this normal thrust can be found out now see this is x axis as usual so i'll consider this is the normal thrust line or x axis and this is the direction of the normal thrust which is perpendicular to this axis now perpendicular to this this is the radial shear line or radial shear axis so normal thrust is denoted as n and radial shear is denoted as q okay now draw these two forces here this is horizontal force okay and this is the vertical force this is h and this is vd or you can say it as v also no problem now resolve these two forces resolve the, these two forces along normal direction and radial direction or you can say resolving the forces along x and along y see here okay now let us consider this horizontal force h will going to make an angle theta with this x axis and similarly this vertical reaction will going to make theta with y axis see this is here this is theta this is theta now let us resolve h and v first along x axis or normal thrust line so normal thrust n is equal to so n is equal to resolve these two forces along x axis this direction so h cos theta okay h cos theta and v this also resolved along this direction this is v what is this angle now if this is theta this will be 90 minus theta okay this is 90 minus theta so h cos theta and this will be v okay cos 90 minus theta this is 90 minus theta okay and why this is plus now we are taking normal thrust in this direction okay so h is also moving in this direction this is plus h and v when you resolve this horizontal this is also moving in this direction this is also plus 
v cos 90 minus theta so h cos theta then v cos 90 minus theta is v sin theta so so normal thrust okay is equal to h cos theta plus v sin theta so right this is equation number three this is normal thrust equation so similarly now here we are resolving x direction now again both the forces will be resolved along radial direction okay so similarly resolving h and v along radial thrust line okay radial shear line or radial thrust line so radial shear is denoted as either f or q so f or q is equal to now see when you resolve this force along q direction this is also moving in the same direction so this is plus plus h into sin theta okay h into sin theta then now see this v when you resolve along this q direction so this is moving downward radial shear is upward direction and this v will be moving downward that's why it is minus so minus v and what is this angle now this angle will be 90 minus theta okay this is 90 minus theta or you can if you go if you want to go with this sign so if you consider this theta then vertical component of this will be v cos theta okay so write this equation number four so equation number three will going to give normal thrust equation or to find out normal thrust at any point on the arch this equation will be used and if you want to find out radial shear this is a radial shear and this is a normal thrust so radial shear is equal to h sin theta minus v cons cos theta so remember equation of parabola that is y then uh, normal thrust n and radial shear q so when you start analysis of uh, three inched arches okay so we'll going to uh, remember these two formulas again okay so this is what the session number one so where uh, you have already uh, gone through the uh, lecture that is uh, what you mean by an arch what is the advantages of arch what is the function of arch classification of uh, arches based on the different factors then uh, how the normal thrust and radial shear can be found out at any point on the arch axis so this is the session number one okay so i hope you understood the um, uh, small theory about this arches and how to find out normal thrust and radial reaction so in session number two uh, we're going to start with the analysis of three inch parabolic arches where we're going to find out reactions that is support reactions plus uh, the normal thrust radial shear then uh, bending moment at any point on the arches okay see this uh, if you consider this three inch arch so in analysis first we'll going to find first step is to find out the reactions okay then the next is normal thrust radial shear at any point on the arch similarly bending moment at any point on the arch so that is uh, will be considered in the session number two i hope you understood this session number one if you knew any doubts are there please uh, feel free to ask me at any point okay thank you very much